Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Junji's farm. But before that, this video is brought to you by Chris Miller and Alfredo. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Junji's farm can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Inspired by a real life farm located in an area of Brazil, close to the Northeast region of the state. This city is known for its strong agricultural economy and for being an important grain production hub, especially soybeans and corn. The size of the lands varies between small, medium and large sized fields, taking advantage of the Brazilian calendar with the addition of a new crop in black beans. This map has 37 fields, two grain cell points, lizard and pioneer cooperatives, sales of bale, wool, and cotton, a lumber yard for the sale of woods and wood chips, contains one water collection point on the map, main headquarters in Vem Semnata, where you will have to build and be creative in landscaping mode. Okay. Sales of potatoes, beets, milk, and eggs will be made at the market. Limestone mine, where you can pick up with your favorite truck or trailer. And a sugar cane factory, where you can sell your sugar beet productions. Well, let's go ahead and load into the map and check it out. Now, while this map does not have any required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, we'll tell you if you load this map up in farm, manager mode, or start from scratch, you will start at the exact same starting point, and there is no farm pre-placed in any game mode. I will tell you, though, in those alternate game modes, you do not start out with any machinery, and, of course, you do not own any land. Now, with respect to low-end systems and the performance of this map, you should have zero issues whatsoever in running this map a nice solid 60 frames per second, assuming your system will run Farming Simulator 22. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map. Now, I have to say, I believe this might be the map author's first map. It feels like it's the map author's first map. I'll just say that. Now, we do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 on this map. In addition, we have Black Bean as an added crop. And if you have your premium expansion, we have our Red Beets, Carrots, and Parsnips. If we take a look at our farmland screen, you'll see we start by owning farmland ID 1. That is the starting farmland in new farmer mode. And you can buy that for $116,512 in any alternate game mode. There is a huge section here, which is green scattered around various areas of the map that is basically viable forestry and you can buy that for nearly seven million dollars so it is going to take quite a pretty penny in order to be able to buy all of those trees now all of our machinery is up here at the starting vehicle area and the vehicle shop and that's where you're going to find some sub points to the north we have a few areas here to the west and a few areas here on the extreme east of the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Let's now go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And as you can see, we have fields that range in size from less than one hectare all the way up to 27.75. Now this map is making use of the generic soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that generic soil map is being applied to these fields. Our starting field is going to contain, contain loamy sand, sandy loam, and loam. You see we have areas of silty clay down here to the south, as well as to the north, east, and west. With respect to our crop calendar, here we have our crop calendar. Now this is intended to reflect kind of the South American kind of growth and harvest schedules. We are starting in August. Typically when we see South American maps, 
The starting month is February instead, but here we are starting in August. And you can see where we have our various planting times and our harvest times. In addition, we do have schedule here for black bean, and you're gonna be able to harvest black bean right here when we load in a starting game. With respect to our prices screen, well, we do not have the ability to sell everything. In fact, we are missing the ability to sell a few crops as well as productions. Specifically, we are missing the ability to sell olives. And then as we move down through our productions, we are also missing the ability to sell fabric as well as planks and chocolate. Now, what is kind of interesting about this fact is we have a dairy on the map that can produce chocolate. We also have a sawmill on the map that can produce planks. I'll just come back to the sawmill here in a moment. We'll just kind of let that sink in. At any rate, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also do not have the ability to sell stones. So if we are playing with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own stone sell point. We can take our black beans to the cooperative. With respect to our farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell our washed root crops, nor do we have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items, which is a little bit of a shame given the amount of forestry that is available on this map. With respect to our premium expansion, we can sell our crops and productions. Those playing with pumps and hoses can get rid of your separated manure, and those playing with straw harvest do have the ability to sell your hay and straw pellets. And we start out with a pretty modest list of starting machinery. It's all new, none of it is leased. We do not own any animals at the start. This map does have contracts available, and we also do not own any of the productions at the start. This map does have 10 collectibles, and those 10 collectibles are tractor collectibles, basically the toy tractors from Elm Creek. Let's go and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Fent 724 Vario medium tractor. We have a New Holland CH7.70 harvester that is paired up with the Superplex 25 foot grain header. We have the Brantner Z18051 slash 2 XXL power flex trailer. We also then have our Lumpkin Samgard 9500K cultivator. We have the Optima RS planter and we have the Amazon ZATS 3200 fertilized spreader. We do not have any custom vehicles or implements either on this map. Now, with respect to our starting farm, well, here you go. This is it. There are no buildings pre-placed in any game mode, and this is basically going to be your starting farm. So with that, let's just go ahead and get some elevation and kind of take a look around the map. So you see here that large grass area to the north that is all forestry you're going to see more trees everywhere that you have green well that is basically going to be forestry here on the map let's go ahead and make our way down south the extreme southeast corner and while we're making our way over there let's talk about our scoring a little bit so with respect to Production being built in or areas set aside for such. We have a dairy and a sawmill available on this map. So we do have production built in. And, well, theoretically, you could put nearly anywhere your own production once you clear off a little bit of land. So we are going to give the map a full point. Here we have our bale, cotton, and wool sell point. Make our way back across the map. Here at the south. With respect to the ability to sell all of our basin crops, animal outputs, and productions. Well, we are missing the ability to sell olives, fabric, chocolate, and planks. So we are going to take a quarter point off there. So we're going to give the map three quarters of a point. With respect to the farms being customizable. Well, by default, it's going to get a full point. Because uh, you're looking at the farm. There isn't one. So it is therefore fully customizable. 
buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Well, that is going to be kind of a mixed bag here on the map. And we're going to go ahead and give the map a score of 0.5 because I do believe that a fair bit of the buildings here on the map are not using that new texturing technique. So here you have one of our grain cell points. And this is going to be identified as the Pioneer Agra business. We make our way now down here to the southwest. Now, this is where we're going to find the sawmill. And there are some issues with the sawmill. No. Sorry, this is not where we're going to find the sawmill. The sawmill is coming up next. This is going to be our... mine i believe this is where we're going to be able to buy bulk lime not the traditional lime mine that we are used to seeing with respect to south america maps but we do have a mine nonetheless now let's talk about the sawmill so that's what we're coming up to now the sawmill is a registered production if we buy the sawmill we can well, theoretically use it as a production, but planks never spawn. There is no spawn point for your pallets. So I would not buy this as production. Instead, I would simply use it as a sell point. So here we have our area for our wood chips. This is where we're gonna be able to load wood chips. If we do have this as a production, we have our interactive icon here and we have our wood cell point and our wood cell trigger. But if you happen to run planks, you're going to find that they never spawn any pallets. So I went and when I was testing this, I spawned in a full load of output product at both productions because there was no output triggers located. The dairy did spawn pallets. The sawmill didn't spawn a single thing. So if you are going to own this and you are going to run a sawmill, you need to set it to distribute and send those planks somewhere else, like a carpentry that you put down, or you're going to have to set it to auto sell because the planks are not going to spawn. Up here in the extreme northwest corner. Well, this is where we're going to find our vehicle shop and our starting machinery. So our starting machinery is going to be located right here. We have our dealer maintenance trigger located right behind that. And then if we come inside, we're going to find the dealer trigger right here. Let's go ahead and just a mere formality buy the Mahindra and just make sure that thing spawn where we expect them to be and indeed it does spawn right here where the rest of the starting machinery is located so not too terrible bad of a starting area for our starting machinery given the open nature of this map you're going to be probably buying some pretty large machinery now right next door to that we do have another grain cell point in i believe this is going to be labeled the cooperative Indeed it is. And then right next door, we have our fuel point. And then we're gonna come down a little bit. And here we have a grocery cell point, as well as a bale cell trigger. At this point, we're gonna make our way all the way across the map, extreme Western edge. And that's where we're gonna come across our animal dealer and the dairy so with respect to the last scoring metric of trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked as i mentioned at the sawmill the marker areas for both the dairy and the sawmill are missing so we are going to give the map a score of 0.75 on that one as well it's going to wrap this map up well, it's going to give this map a score of four. Four out of five. That's what we have going on here. So here we have the sugar beet plant. 
This is simply a sawmill for selling sugar beets and sugar cane. Then we have our dairy. Our pallets are going to spawn right here. In fact, they're going to spawn on this little hillside because the building is above the ground. We have our interactive icon and we have our dump point for our inputs here at the dairy. And this is just a standard dairy. It doesn't do anything custom. And then we have our animal dealer located right here. Where we're going to be able to buy our various animals. Assuming... Oh, the trigger is actually over here. It would be nice to have the trigger where the icon is, but that's okay. It's actually over here, just so everyone is aware. And we've got a nice little deco kind of airport here with a landing and takeoff strip. So that's it, folks. That is this map. Not a lot going on here. A couple cell points here, a couple cell points there. It would be really, really nice to see this map have the ability to sell chocolate and planks at a minimum because, well, we have productions for both of those. But it is always nice to see the ability to sell everything that you could produce on this map. And it would be nice to see planks actually spawning at the sawmill. And those are some of the reasons why I believe that maybe this map might be the map author's first go at producing a map, which is fine. Everyone starts from somewhere, and hopefully their next product will be well, a little bit better than the first. And there's always the ability to come back and maybe make a few corrections with this map. So basically do look for this map to hopefully have an update soon to correct a couple of the issues found in this video, as well as maybe a couple of the other issues maybe not found in this video that other people might find.